Hello, it's Paul Beck with the game. So, in the last video, this video, probably the next uh, one or two, I'm talking about uh, methane in the in the. I'm talking about the global global carbon budget, uh, methane in particular, and the rapid rise of methane in the atmosphere. Because of the short lifetime, the relatively short lifetime of methane compared to CO2, if we can reduce the methane emissions and reduce the methane levels in the atmosphere, we could have a very rapid reduction of the climate, of, of the forcing causing, um, you know, abrupt climate change, very rapid rise in global temperatures. So this is an area of intense study so a consortium kind of was set up, multidisciplinary, many, many scientists from all different um, disciplines um, working together to try to understand methane around the planet. So they published a review paper just recently. The previous one was in 2016, I believe. So I'll give you the, uh, all of the latest science on methane. And one of the key factors is that the the um, the tropics produce about two thirds of the methane that's in the in the atmosphere. Um, the mid latitudes in the northern hemisphere, so roughly thirty to sixty degrees latitude north, is about a third of the um, methane emissions are produced there, and only about five percent in the Arctic. And as of twenty seventeen, the claim from this uh, paper, this very detailed paper, and I'll give you the links and uh, talk about the details. Um, indicate that the Arctic, the, the methane bomb, if you like, in the Arctic certainly hasn't gone off yet. Um, of course, as we lose more and more sea ice and, uh, you know, as the Arctic continues to warm and the water continues to warm, so, so the, you know, the, the methane on the uh, submerged in the ocean on the East Siberian Arctic Shelf specifically, and the, per and the permafrost, the melting permafrost on land and so on, and the methane cloth rates, those have not created the so-called methane bomb yet, as of 2017, which was when the data was, was good for. But the risks of this um, type of large episodic emission, you know, the so-called methane bomb, are increasing higher and higher as the Arctic continues to warm faster and faster. So let me get back to the uh, paper, the, the press article that came out recently about global methane levels soaring to uh, record high. Um, and basically, uh, you know, so this is a methane curve from 1985 to 2020, you know, large increase slowing down here and then rapid increase again from 2007 to now. Now, the atmospheric lifetime of methane, it says it's around 12 years, but I'll talk about that in more detail because methane is removed from the atmosphere by, um, first of all, it, you know, it's produced, it goes, if it's produced under the ocean, um, if from decomposition, from warming of the ocean sediments, for example, on the eastern Siberian Arctic shelf, then it bubbles up through the water column. Um, some of it is broken down by methanotropes in the water. Um, part of it just dissolves into the water, but a lot of it will get up into the atmosphere, especially if it's coming up quickly. And the lifetime, it's broken down in the atmosphere by the hydroxide radical, by chlorine in the atmosphere, by uh, singlet oxygen if ozone is um, broken down and the oxygen then will react to the methane. It's also broken down in the, uh, it also gets up in the stratosphere and it's broken down there. And there's a lot of, um, a lot that's captured in soils as well. So those things reduce, uh, you know, they react with methane, break it down. So it's lifetime in the, you know, overall lifetime is, is uh, nine, nine to 12 years, say, nine, 10, 11, 12. So, and it depends on the latitude as well. And the, the hydroxide, OH distribution in the atmosphere, things like that, a lot of different, you know, the devil's always in the details, as I say. Um, but the, uh, you know, methane is, has a huge global warming potential. I don't know why they always say more, you know, they say more than 20 times as potent as CO2. Yeah, well, that number is 34 times. Why don't they just say 34 times 
on a 20 year time on, on a 100 year time scale, 86 times on a 20 year time scale, and several hundred times on a few year time scale. Uh, anyway, roughly one third of global methane emissions comes from bacteria in natural wetlands that produce the gas when they decompose organic material. Agriculture is about 20 to 25 percent of global methane emissions and fossil fuel sources is about 20 to 25 percent. Um, the emissions, there's no evidence that emissions from wetlands or other natural sources has increased substantially from the 2000 to 2006 average. But emissions from agriculture driven by rising red meat consumption, right, we should all become vegetarians, in some parts of the world rose by almost 12% to 227 million tons in 2017. Fossil fuels emissions of methane, including natural gas fields, leaking pipelines, contributed 108 million tons of methane emissions in 2017, a rise of 17%. Okay, uh, so livestock farming and oil and gas production are two engines powering rising methane emissions. People may joke, but cows and other ruminants burp as much methane as the oil and gas industry. Okay, emissions have increased in most regions, most markedly in Africa, the Middle East, China, and South Asia. Europe is the only region where methane emissions have dropped in recent years. Okay, so those are the articles. Uh, so let's look at the detailed scientific papers now. But first of all, this is the, uh, you know, if you want to see the concentration, this is the Global Monitoring Laboratory. Earth Systems Research Laboratories, ESRL, Google this, uh, and, and methane, and you can get to this uh, page here, and we're looking at trends in methane. This is the trends, the recent trends. You can see a yearly cycle, like in CO2, and this is the longer term trend from 79 to 2020. Okay, and you can also get CO2, N2O, nitrous oxide, and SF6. This is a very powerful greenhouse gas, so that's shown. You can get trends in those things as well. Okay, now Methane Tracker 2020 is in the I International Energy uh, Association. Um, they're talking about the methane from the sources of methane. And uh, we have, so we have wetlands and agriculture fossil fuels here, and then waste, storing waste, and the methane's emitted from uh, the, the, where, where waste is stored, um, and biofuels and biomass burning are also on here. So, so there's th this is the uh, IEA, International Energy Agency, um, methane tracker project. Now, this is, there's two main papers that I'm going to talk about, and these are both open access. So, the first one is increasing anthropogenic methane emissions arise equally from agriculture and fossil fuel sources is the title and you can google it and find this paper and the second one is all is on the global methane budget 2000 to 2017 and you can also google that one so these are the main um, scientific papers that have come out recently on methane Okay, so, in, so here we go. Um, increasing anthropogenic methane emissions are arising equally from agriculture and fossil fuel sources. Okay, um, so basically, uh, you know, they talk about climate stabilization is elusive. Increasing greenhouse gas concentrations are increasing global average surface temperatures to 1.1 C above pre-industrial. And again, uh, they define pre-industrial like most people, which is from 1880 to 1910, the average then. But pre-industrial, according to the IPCC, was ori originally defined as seven, the year 1750. So. So you need to add about 0 0.3 degrees to these numbers to bring you to the reference frame to 1750. So changing the baseline is not a good thing. It's very confusing to people. Um, CO2 emissions from fossil fuel use, deforestation, and other anthropogenic sources reached 43 billion metric tons in 1918. Now be careful because this is sometimes reported in terms of CO2 and sometimes in terms of carbon. And to correct, if the, 
So to convert this number to the reporting from carbon, you need to divide by the, the CO2 molecular weight over the carbon molecular weight, which is 44, you know, carbon's 12, oxygen is 16 times two is 32, plus 12 is 44, divide by 12 for the carbon, that's 11 thirds, that's three, three, three and two thirds. Okay, so divide this by 3.667 and you get, a, you know, about, about 11 or so uh, billion metric tons of carbon. Uh, and, you know, of course, storms, extreme weather events are displacing people, a record 7 million in the first half of 2019, and so on. So methane's emissions have contributed about a quarter of the relative cumulative radiative forcing. So we've got CO2, the main greenhouse gas, gases, CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide um, since 19. Since 1750, the cumulative radiative forcings, methane's about a quarter of it. Okay, CO2 dominates and N2O is getting more and more significant. Okay, and they talk about the global warming potential of 86 times for, for, for methane. On a 20 year time scale, they say 28 times, but it's actually 34 times on a 100 year time scale. I mean, they never mention a few year time scale. When methane in the Arctic, for example, is what happens in a few years. Um, the methane concentrations in the atmosphere reached 1875 parts per billion at the end of 2019. That's more than two and a half times pre-industrial levels. And the largest methane sources are, in, include anthropogenic emissions from agriculture, waste, the extraction and use of fossil fuels, but also from natural emissions from wetlands, freshwater systems, and geological sources. So. So um, the global methane budget is what we're talking about. And uh, so this paper is talking about it, but the, like I said, the key paper is on the global methane budget is the next one that I'll, I'll discuss. So, uh, so let's just have a look at some of the, the key things here. Um, so there's a chart here which gives the, the global methane emissions um, from so it breaks it down. So there's always two methods shown: a bottom-up method, where you start at the ground and you look at all the sources and you add them all up, and a top-down method where you monitor the emission, monitor this, the total methane levels in the atmosphere. Um, so there's the two methods, and and uh, in a perfect world these should match, but but they're close, but they don't completely match. You know, so as, as research proceeds, it tries to bring these numbers together, but it's two different methods to, to try to find out what's going on. So wetlands is a bit, these are natural sources, these are anthropogenic sources. Okay, so natural sources, wetlands is a huge factor. Um, and, uh, you know, fresh water is huge too. Geological, wild animals, termites, permafrost soils direct, biogenic ocean. Okay, so the total natural sources, um, and there, there's two time periods, 2000 to 2006 and 2017. So you can look at the increase. Um, you can look at each of the different aspects and see how the uh, changes are occurring. And then there's anthropogenic sources. So agriculture and waste. So, so take the average of those two numbers and this is the uncertainty range in the square brackets, and this is what we have in 2017, and this is uh, 2000 to 2006. So you can see the rise in agriculture and waste and see the, where the breakdown occurs. Fossil fuels, you can see the rise. Uh, biomass and biofuel burning, so we've got the total anth anthropogenic sources total sources if you add the anthropogenic and natural, and then the sinks, okay? The sinks are uh, chemical loss. This is the hydroxide in the atmosphere. You also have soil uptake, and if you add those together, you can get the total sink. So you can see how they change with time. Uh, this is the global methane budget. You can see fossil fuel production here, agriculture and waste production here, biomass and biofuel burning production from wetlands, production from other natural emissions, and then the total sinks here. Okay, I'm gonna continue this in, a, uh, in another video. Thank you for listening.